Hi, my name is Stacy, but you may know me better as Stacky Scraps from the Make the Cut Forum, or you may not know me at all. Either way, I'm very excited to be bringing you this video. It's my very first video, and it's about the basic coloring page technique for the Make the Cut software. This technique is something that I came up with. I'm sure other people have come up with the same thing, so I by no means am trying to claim it as my own, but I was asked by a few people on the forum to share the way I do these pages. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of background about why I use this, how I use it, and the videos to come. I cannot possibly find a way to use all the different things I do in one video, so I'm starting with this. This is the simplest technique. It's the simplest because it'll give you the least amount of time in the Make the Cut software. However, there's a trade-off for that. It'll give you more time paper piecing. I do intend to do additional videos as well for more advanced users. If you're already layering, this may not really do anything for you. This isn't going to be your most complex ones. It's going to be a simple, simple get in, get out. It's great if you're just starting with the software and you want to make multiple layered images and you're not really sure how. Um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about how I select my images because I think that that actually is very important in having a great image on the back end. I know I see a lot of tutorial videos that kind of don't take you from the very beginning to the very end. They start with an image or something already. And I always wonder, how did they get that or how did they decide on that? So I wanted to at least give you a little insight into that. If all this is boring you already, you can fast forward to the part where I'm already in the program. Um, when we first started doing this, someone had inquired about a Precious Moments coloring page. So I'm going to use that as my example. So I do all the image searching in Google. So I'm at Google, just www.google.com. And I'm going to now click on the image search so I can search just pictures. And I'm going to type in Precious Moments coloring page. And then this is something else I like to do. Basically, there's three things I'm looking for in a picture. I'm looking for something that's pure black and white. I'm looking for something that's from, in this case, since it's licensed, I guess there's a fourth thing. I'm looking for something that's from the original creator, or at least looks so much like it is that I can't tell the difference. I'm also looking for a large image because those trace better, and then I'm always looking for a free image. So pardon any infringements here, but I am just using this as my own use and to get an idea. So I'm going to click on show options because what I want to do is I want large images. So I'm going to filter out anything else. So by clicking on large, now I've gone from having any size images to only large images selected. The second one is grabbing me. I think it's very cute. So I'm going to take a look at it. I see the page load and I notice that there's a whole bunch of images for me so it's kind of like an extra bonus. I'm going to scroll down through them and this image right here with the baby and the teddy bear, this is actually an image that I've purchased on a sticker. So I also like it for this particular tutorial because it's mostly clean. So when I say that, things like this that have plaids or stripes or polka dotting, anything like that or anything that has grass on the bottom, things like that are always going to be a little more difficult to do. So when you're first starting, you might want to shy away from those. And that's what I'm doing with this image. I'm selecting a simpler image. There's nothing on the bottom that's interfering with it. So now hopefully it'll open for me. There we go. It's a little slow, but we'll be bear with me. I'm going to right click on the image and I'm going to save the picture as. I'm going to save it to my desktop. I'm going to call it PM Precious Moments Baby Boy, part of my terrible typing skills. So that's all saved now. And I'm going to open the Make the Cut software. Very excited to have my new version, I might add. I'm going to go into Custom Shapes because this is where I'm going to import my own picture. That's this button here with the girl silhouette. So I'm going to import and I'm going to go down through my messy desktop and select my PM baby boy that I just did. While I'm waiting it for, for it to render, I would love to add that I'm very excited about this new feature, which shows you the picture that you're about to import right next to the picture that will be imported. This is new with the new version. 
1.1 and I'm already loving it. <clears throat> what I'm be looking for when this comes up, which it just did, is that everything is solid. There's no broken lines that shouldn't be. So I can see that everything here appears here, and this actually appears to be a very good traced image, which is fabulous for the purposes of our first tutorial. So I'm going to accept it. And it's small, but I don't mind. I'm going to go until my arrow. See how this is an arrow just pointing to the left, and it changes to an arrow pointed in both directions. I'm going to take that, click on it, and drag it to make it bigger. I like working with big images. There is another trick for me personally if you're going to be doing a lot of layering. You cannot select anything out here. It defaults to starting up at this top left corner. So I always make sure that my box is not over that edge. On this side it doesn't matter. See I can select over here. But on this side it does. So that's just my own little personal trick. And now I'm ready to break my image. So anytime that I'm going to do layering, I don't want my image to be like this because this would just cut out as a piece and one piece with a whole bunch of little pieces inside of it. But it would cut out as maybe one piece. I want everything to be layered so I can cut it out in all my different colors. So the first thing I'm going to do is do Edit, Shape, Magic, Select All. That's going to select my image. Now had I, not, had, I had two images on here, I could just drag, point and drag around the image, and that will select it also. So just in case, I know that kind of threw me a little bit. Then I'm going to go to Edit Shape Magic, and I'm going to break it. So I'm going to break it into all of its individual pieces. Now, once I've done this, there's a couple things I'm going to be looking for. The first is for things I don't want. So for instance, this bottom right. I don't need this person's, I'm assuming that's a signature of some sort on whoever did the image. Well, I don't, I don't need that for my purposes, so I'm going to click. And now when I click, I notice that the box around it isn't what's selected. It's the box around the entire picture. So it's selecting the outline instead of just the little piece I want to get rid of. And I think I'm going to even blow this up a little bigger. I like working with it very big and close up. I can find more that way, so I am very excited about my 200% and I'm sure I'll be using that soon. But since I have my biggest, my bigger box, as I was saying, I do jump around a little bit, so I apologize, I need to get underneath that. So the way I can do that is if I hold down shift and hit click tab and hit tab on my keyboard, it'll move that to the back and you'll see that it's not blue anymore or not selected around here. So now I try to click on it again, and now I have my shoe 